When I was working on the book, which was uh, five, six years ago, finished it, one thing I realized is they were never in the press. They were never being sued. They were never, there was never really any negative news about McKinsey, except for Enron. Enron was when yes, they first they worked for Enron too. happened. And like in the last couple of years from South Africa to recent coverage in the journal and the Times about uh, stuff in U.S. federal bankruptcy, these guys are all over the place. I think they lost the compass. They lost the compass, but is that going to affect business? I, by the way, corresponded with a couple of CEOs over the weekend that actually used McKinsey that seemed to suggest that maybe they should rethink that. You know, if you look at their denial and, you know, if we take them at their word, they're horrified and you didn't have people deliberately putting together some list, right? It, it, it's sort of, it's, it's getting a little tiring right now that these guys keep claiming they're working on stuff that they don't know what its ultimate what, what, purpose was. Yeah, that's was. what I don't understand. Why in the world would you put together a report like this? This was an internal memo. Who was their client? An internal memo for just uh, asking each other about what's up with Saudi Arabia. And who are, the, who are the critics? And let's name a few of them. You know, it reminds me, uh, one thing that I haven't seen in some of the coverage in the last 24 hours or so, this is so reminiscent of Michael Porter and Monitor working with Libya. They accidentally did some work for a dictator. <laughs> and then they had to backpedal it all, saying, oh, we thought it, this was an uh, uh, emerging democracy. But let me just suggest, so the FII, this is this conference which CNBC and myself and every other media organization, so many CEOs have bailed out on. Who is still in? McKinsey. Actually, all of the consulting companies are still on the website. They're still supporting this, this event, unlike virtually every other major, major company in the world. What? what is there something different about the consulting firms? And ultimately, do the big American companies that actually have walked out on this conference walk out on these firms? I think it's amazing that, you know, back when Rajat Gupta was arrested, I talked to a number of CEOs and said... And just to bring everybody up to date, Rajat Gupta used to be the managing director at McKinsey. McKinsey, who went to jail for insider trading. On a Goldman Sachs tip. That he was passing to Raja Ratnam, the hedge right. fund manager. Exactly. So, when he, when, he, when he got uh, indicted and arrested, I talked to some CEOs and said, are you still going to work with these guys? Like, this is, their, their entire promise is to keep your stuff confidential. And here he is selling it out the side door to a hedge fund manager. And the CEOs at the time said, that's a rogue employee, even though it was Rajat Gupta. They said, that's a rogue employee, not my guy at McKinsey. But this is starting to look institutional. This is looking like the institution is failing. Inside McKinsey, is there any sense that they want to change the system? Meaning, I assume that there has to be different factions about sort of how they approach the world. You know, when I went in The Golden Passport, the, my book on Harvard Business School, the conclusion I came to was that the only real impetus for change here is going to come from the students because the institution is ossified. The students need to demand change. So is there, what factions? I bet you MBAs who are thinking of taking a job. Well, that's what year. I was gonna say. These companies rely on these MBA students, these young people, all of whom, by the way, seem to have pushed technology companies and other companies to sort of approach this with a sort of a higher level of value or, or moral value. Does that change at, at, at the consulting firms? I think it, it, like, how can it not? Like if you, you know, all the consulting firms, it's client first, client interest first, right? So in, in a sense, McKinsey is Saudi Arabia when it's working for Saudi Arabia. So you've got an MBA who's coming out who says, huh, I w let me think, should I work for Uber? They seem to be up to some uh, sort of underhanded techniques on the top level there. Or, you know, should I work for McKinsey slash Saudi Arabia? Suddenly that's a really interesting question. You know, where are your morals going to be kept? Is there, but it, more broadly, is there something about the consulting firms? I think it's, uh, you know... Is, it, is this just about McKinsey? Because I'm now looking at this screen, and there literally is BCG, Deloitte, e &Y, McKinsey, Oliver Wyman, PwC, all are the only companies that really have not committed to getting away from this thing in Saudi Arabia tomorrow. I, t I talk in the firm about what the ultimate issue, I think, with McKinsey's business model and other consulting firms would be, which is what happens when you have power and influence without responsibility, right? So you got all these guys that are lined up behind this conference and stuff. They, they feel they have no responsibility to it. It's, they're just support staff. Right. So they, I don't think they can see the forest for the trees yet that they are part of But do of you this. think that the Black Rocks and J.P. Morgans and Black Stones, all of whom historically have used firms like McKinsey and these consulting firms, who have walked away from something like this, say, you know what, I'm going to walk away from you. 
I think it gets a lot harder to walk in front of your board this week and say, hey, guys, good news. We hired McKinsey to help us solve this ethical problem.